Welcome to the News Cube. I'm Jay Douglas Barker. The campaign trail is warming up in America, and the circus has come to town nationwide. Now, both parties would have us believe that their opponents are driven by misguided self-interest, and both parties are taking great liberties with the truth. The Democrats, for example, frequently point out that the Republicans have given tax cuts to the wealthiest of Americans. And in making that claim, the Democrats are using a definition of wealth that comes from a standard written a long time ago. Now, back then, an annual income of $100,000 was extravagant, and people earning more than that were the wealthiest of Americans <laughs> back then. They're certainly not so now. The Democrats are using an obscure portion of an archaic tax code to paint the Republicans as elitist and insensitive snobs. The Republicans, on the other hand, have pounded the image of the Democrats as tax and spend liberals into our collective consciousness. And in doing so, they've made taxes seem bad, something that citizens need relief from. A tax relief, it sounds good on the surface, but if you drill down into it a little bit, you'll find that the Republicans have not done anyone any favors. How can America exist without the money to build the society that it wants to be? Taxes are supposed to be good for everyone. But in the current climate, they're seen as something that we all need relief from. It's reached a point where the IRS is having trouble recruiting qualified young accountants to work. They set up a booth at an accounting school, at a job fair, and nobody wants to come over and talk. Don't we want really good accountants working for the government? Working for the government in any capacity is not always seen as a good thing anymore. What is seen as a good thing these days? Well, don't go away. We'll be right back. Iraq takes the reins of its own military, American gas prices falling, and another mob attack rocks a U.S. city. Hi, I'm Mark Hopkins, and you're watching Potted Meat. Iraq took control of its armed forces command, a major step in the country's painful path towards independence and an essential move before international troops can eventually withdraw. The deal puts the prime minister in direct control of the military command. In a ceremony last week, Iraqi authorities took over control of the country's small army and navy and the 8th Iraqi Army Division, the first of 10 divisions to eventually be handed over. After disbanding the remaining Iraqi army following the U.S.-led invasion in 2003, coalition forces have been training the new Iraqi military. Gas prices all over the country seem to be falling, but analysts are unable to agree on the reasons. Texan analysts seem to think it's because prices have finally bounced back from Katrina and Rita repercussions. California analysts speak to intense competition amongst gasoline vendors. Some analysts say it's reactionary to falling oil prices as a result of new reservoirs being found off the coast of Florida. One thing that's for certain, prices all over the country have dropped between 20 to 60 cents per gallon. An 11-year-old girl was sexually assaulted by as many as 20 boys as a 16-year-old girl watched and told her what sex acts perform in Milwaukee this week, according to U.S. authorities. It was the latest mob attack to rock the U.S. Midwest and set off another round of civic soul-searching there and in the United States. The 16-year-old girl and a 15-year-old boy have been charged in a juvenile court after the attack, which took place on Monday in a house on the city's north side. A 40-year-old man who also had sex with a child may be charged as well, according to the authorities. That's the highlights and the lowlights for this week. For more news, information, and entertainment, head on over to pottedmeat.com. I'm Mark Hopkins, and you're watching Potted Meat. An American serviceman was attacked and beaten in public last week. He was not in Baghdad, 
He was not in Afghanistan. He was in a small town in America. He was asked if he had been to Iraq, and when he replied that he had, he was viciously, viciously beaten. During the attack, the assailant accused the veteran of being a baby killer. This guy hadn't killed any babies. He, he had risked his life to go into a difficult situation to try and make things better. He'd survived Iraq, made it home, only to be attacked for something that he had never done. Meanwhile, the announcement that a senior Al-Qaeda member was transferred to Gitmo has prompted a victim's right organization in America to publicly call for help on his behalf. The claim is that since the Constitution says that all men have rights to life, liberty, and so on, the American government has violated the rights of this man, and he is therefore a victim entitled to the benefit of a victim's advocate. This guy, a victim? What about the people on the planes? What about the people in the buildings? What about this guy? Five years ago, this was somebody's husband, someone's father. He was working hard, paying his taxes, minding his own business. It was September. He was probably starting to think a little bit about the holidays with his family. Suddenly, the choices he had to make. And we're supposed to extend victims' protection to one of the guys who made it happen? We're not trying to call up reactionary bloodlust here. We're just trying to keep the story in focus. We're in the middle of difficult times here. A lot of powerful people worldwide have made some serious mistakes. More may be made soon. We've got to pay attention and back away from self-serving distortions of truth. There's been too much noise already. Let's get it right next time. From the News Cube, I'm Jay Douglas Barker.